Hello guys, welcome to Inspiring Minds. This is Dr. Sonal. In the last video, we have discussed about adrenal gland. We saw its basic structure, where it is located in our body, what hormones does it produce and the function. Now, if you haven't checked that video yet, click on the i button here and watch that video as it will help you to understand better our next topic, which is disorders of the adrenal gland. And under this, first we are going to see congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Now, this is the most common adrenal disorder seen in pediatric population. And it is caused due to deficiency of one of the following enzymes involved in the synthesis of cortisol and aldosterone. These enzymes are 21 hydroxylase, this is the most common enzyme deficiency seen in CH, followed by 11 beta hydroxylase, followed by 17 alpha hydroxylase, and the last one is 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. Now, cholesterol metabolism in adrenal gland. As you can see, there are many enzymes involved in this pathway. Now, in CH, the most common enzyme deficiency which is seen is 21 hydroxylase. If this enzyme is deficient, the final product which is aldosterone and in the second limb cortisol is not produced. But in the third limb as you can see, 21 hydroxylase is not required for testosterone production. So testosterone production is not hampered and is produced in sufficient quantity. Now. As aldosterone is not produced, feedback is sent to pituitary to release ACTH. This ACTH will act upon adrenal gland. In spite of content stimulation of adrenal gland by ACTH, aldosterone is not produced. Why? Because we need this enzyme 21 hydroxylase for its production and this enzyme is absent in the patient. So aldosterone production, aldosterone is not produced, cortisol is not produced, but testosterone, testosterone is continuously produced under the effect of ACTH. So this condition is clinically manifested in patient as aldosterone is absent. So this will manifest as hypotension, shock and most important feature, salt wasting. Aldosterone is responsible for sodium and water reabsorption normally. As aldosterone is absent, there is loss of sodium ions from the body. And patient suffers from severe hyponatremia. Also, hyperkalemia is seen in patient. Now, cortisol is absent. So patient suffers from hypoglycemia and testosterone is produced continuously under the effect of ACTH. So if it's a male child, he will suffer from precocious puberty. If it's a female child, we will see virilization. Virilization is ambiguous genitalia. Now, CAH is an autosomal recessive disorder. For screening, what we do is at At six weeks, when pregnancy is confirmed, we will start giving dexamethasone to patient. It is a potent steroid and what it does is, it causes suppression of ACTH. As a result, production of steroid hormones by adrenal gland of fetus is decreased then after 12 weeks at 12 weeks actually and 12 weeks of pregnancy we'll do chorion chorionic with a sampling and if it's a if it's a male child, 
we will stop giving dexamethasone if it's a female child will continue to give dexamethasone why because female fetuses are the ones those are going to suffer from ambiguous genitalia so to prevent this condition we will continue to give dexamethasone now <clears throat> let's see the next enzyme deficiency which is 11 beta hydroxylase when this enzyme is deficient again we won't get aldosterone or cortisol but testosterone production is not hampered also when 11 beta hydroxylase is deficient this intermediate metabolite deoxycorticosterone its level is increased and this deoxycorticosterone has mineralocorticoid activity as a result this enzyme deficiency this 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency is clinically manifested as mineralocorticoid axis in patient so we will see increased blood pressure is hypertension increased level of sodium ions hypernatremia decreased level of potassium ions hypokalemia now the next enzyme deficiency is next enzyme deficiency is 17 alpha hydroxylase 17 alpha hydroxylase when this enzyme is deficient cortisol and testosterone both are not produced but aldosterone is continuously produced therefore this enzyme deficiency 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency is clinically manifested in patient as there will be cheese level of aldosterone the patient will suffer from hypertension decreased level of cortisol patient will suffer from hypoglycemia and decreased level of testosterone now this decreased level of testosterone in female child it will not have any major effect but if it's a male child we will see virilization we saw virilization <clears throat> in two enzyme deficiencies okay so and in male and female both in male we see this in 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency due to low level of testosterone in females it is seen in 21 hydroxylase deficiency so Virilization is seen in both male and male and female, but the enzyme deficiencies are different. So remember this. Also, the last enzyme deficiency is 3 beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase. In this enzyme deficiency, we have low level of all three steroids: aldosterone, cortisol, and estradiol. We, we, we just have this dehydroepiandrosterone in large quantity. And this is a weak androgen. 
so this will cause in male child under virilization decrease pubic hair growth and in female child mild virilization so this was the topic congenital adrenal hypoplasia if you haven't subscribed to our channel so please subscribe to it